हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय चैनल टीची लर्निंग आई एम रजिता आई एम गोइंग टू गिव द वीड नोट्स ऑफ सेमेस्टर फोर दैट इज ऑप्शनल पेपर गाइडेंस एंड काउंसलिंग इसके जो यूनिट टू है दैट इज अंडरस्टैंडिंग स्कूल काउंसलिंग प्रोग्राम इसकी मैं आपको आज नोट्स देने वाली हूँ लास्ट वीक आई हैव ऑलरेडी गिवन गाइडेंस एंड काउंसलिंग की यूनिट वन मैं आपको लास्ट वीक दी थी और आज मैं आपको यूनिट टू देने वाली हूँ ठीक है यूनिट टू के बाद नेक्स्ट वीक मैं आपको यूनिट थ्री दे दूंगी और उसके बाद हमारा ये सेमेस्टर फोर कंप्लीट हो जाएगा एंड आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग सेमेस्टर फोर विल बी कंटिन्यूइंग विद द सेमेस्टर टू सेमेस्टर टू हमने स्टार्ट किया था आई थिंक सो आई जस्ट गिवन ओनली वन पेपर एंड आफ्टर दैट आई हैव स्टार्टेड सेमेस्टर फोर बिकॉज तब मैंने सुना था कि सेमेस्टर टू के एग्जाम्स नहीं हो रहे हैं ठीक है सो so, बाकी स्टूडेंट्स के लिए ये हेल्पफुल होगा जो अभी के बैचेस में है लाइक ट्वेंटी टू टू ट्वेंटी ये बहुत सारे स्टूडेंट्स को हेल्पफुल होगा so let us start this unit टू guidance and counseling इसके जो unit टू है understanding school counseling program उसे से हम लोग स्टार्ट करते हैं सेकेंडली बिफोर स्टार्टिंग आई वुड लाइक टू चल यू कि मैंने अपना टेलीग्राम और इंस्टा आई डी यहाँ पर दिया है डिस्क्रिप्शन में दिया है प्लीज़ 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 शो योर लव एंड सपोर्ट टू दैट ऑल्सो लाइक यू हैव शोन फॉर माई चैनल दैट इज डी जी लर्निंग सेम थिंग ओके सो लेट एस स्टार्ट फर्स्ट कम्स टू द मीनिंग ऑफ काउंसलिंग एज वी ऑल नो द नॉर्मल मीनिंग ऑफ द काउंसलिंग जो होता है नॉर्मल कि जो काउंसलर्स होते हैं उनके सामने काउंसलिंग को बैठाया जाता है एंड दे यूज टू हैव द कन्वर्सेशन जो भी उन्हें डाउट है जो भी एडवाइस चाहिए वट एवर एडवाइस दे वॉन्ट टू टेक वो सारे चीज़ वो लोग काउंसलर से लेते द सेम मीनिंग इज है कोई डिफरेंस नहीं है वही चीज़ है लेट एस रीड वंस द टर्म काउंसलिंग इन गाइडेंस लिटरेचर कन्वेज अ मीनिंग मच मोर दैन इट्स लिटरेरी मीनिंग एंड इट्स स्कोप इज मच ब्रॉडर दैन मी आर गिविंग एडवाइस द मेजर कंसर्न ऑफ काउंसलिंग सर्विस इज टू हेल्प द इंडिविजुअल टू अचीव सेल्फ डायरेक्शन है ना उस किसी को सेल्फ डायरेक्शन अचीव करना सेल्फ नॉलेज या सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन Before citing the definition given by different specialist on this area, it is essential on our part to know the meaning of counselling service in general perspective. General में जो हम लोग जानते हैं that is counselling is a face to face meeting for interpersonal relationship of the counsellor and the counsellee in which the counsellor who happens to be the person with special training and competency offers suggestion. opinion and advice to the counselee to assist him to understand himself and to develop his, his potentialities and resources so that he may function as an independent and self-reliant person capable of making his own decisions and solving his own problems ठीक है जो हमारे डे टू डे लाइफ में एक्चुअली जो काउंसलिंग का मीनिंग होता है वही यहाँ दिया गया है अब हम लोग आते हैं जो स्पेशल गाइडेंस हमें जो मिलता है दैट मीन्स जो भी जो भी डिफरेंट स्पेशलिस्ट ने काउंसलिंग के मीनिंग्स बताए हैं उस पर सो फर्स्ट इज कंसल्टेशन म्यूचुअल इंटरचेंज ऑफ ओपिनियन डेलीबरेटिंग टूगेदर दिस इज सेट बाय द वेबस्टर्स Counseling implies a relationship between two individuals in which one gives a certain kind of assistance to the other. This was said by Mayer. Counseling is a series of direct contacts with the individual which aims to offer him assistance in changing his attitudes and behavior. This was said by Carl Rogers. The term counseling covers all types of two personal situations in which one person that is a client is helped to adjust more effectively to himself and his environment said by Robinson and counseling is the application of the personal resources of the school or other institution to the solution of the problems of the individual this was said by Traxler ठीक है नाउ कम्स टू द पर्पस ऑफ काउंसलिंग मैनी कंसिडर काउंसलिंग अ पेनाशिया फॉर ऑल इल्स विच इज़ नॉट ट्रू बोलते ना सिर्फ नहीं उनकी वो डिप्रेशन में है काउंसलर्स के पास लेके जाओ या मतलब कुछ भी इल है देन काउंसलर्स के पास लेके जाओ बट एक्चुअली में ऐसा नहीं होता है इंडिविजुअल्स हैव वाइड रेंजिंग एंड मैनी अ टाइम अनरियालिस्टिक एक्सपेक्टेशंस रिगार्डिंग काउंसलिंग दिस इन टर्न लीड टू डिसअपॉइंटमेंट 
The reason for this state of affairs is lack of proper understanding as to what exactly are the goals of counselling. Some of the major purposes of counselling generally accepted by counsellors are given below. First is the achievement of positive mental health. An individual is said to have positive mental health when he or she is able to relate meaningfully with others and lead a fulfilling life. He or she is able to love and to be loved and be loved. One purpose of counseling is to help the individual to attain this state. Okay, mental health. Second is proper resolution. Proper resolution means uh, here will be the hyphen. Ye ek point mental health point. Okay, proper resolution. Another purpose of counseling is to help the individual to come out of a difficult situation or a problem. It must be remembered that the individual is only assisted that and finds his or her own solution for the problems. Next is counseling for decision. Making ability to make right and timely decisions is crucial for success in life. One major goal of counselling is to make the individual capable of making independent decisions. Counsellor may assist the individual by providing necessary information or clarifying the counselling goals etc. But the decisions should be taken by the counsellor himself or herself. Next is improving personal effectiveness. An effective person yeah, it will be a hyphen. Yes, are na points. It here yeah, points me likhega. Improving personal effectiveness. An effective person is one who is able to control impulses, think in creative ways, and has competence to recognize, define, and solve problems. It can be seen that these different goals are not exclusive. These are all interdependent and overlapping. Next is. Helping to change for development, helping to change. Okay, yeah, okay, behavior modification. Helping to change for development, change is always necessary. Counseling helps individuals to make changes in their attitude, perceptions, or personality. Next is behavior modification. Another aim of counseling is to help in modifying the behavior. Removal of undesirable behavior or self-defeating behavior and learning desirable behavior is considered necessary for attaining effectiveness and good adjustment. The behaviorally oriented counselors are the chief proponents of this view. Okay. So these are the five points. Assist, achievement of positive mental health, problem resolution, uh, counseling for decision, improving personal effectiveness, helping to change and behavior modification. This is the purpose of our counseling. In this purpose of counseling. Actually, people do counseling just because of this. But we normally jo, uh, normal people, hai, common people, hai, what we all think ki, yeah, zarur usse kuch dikkat hai. he or she is ill, that's why he is going to the counselors. But it is not true. Okay? Now comes to the nature. It assists the pupil to understand the factors which have caused his problems, worries and difficulties and thereby to be alert about those factors so as to be able to prevent the recurrence of his problems and difficulties. In this sense, counseling is preventive in nature. It assists the pupil to understand themselves and his environment and to find out solutions to his problems with satisfaction to himself and benefit to the environment. Finding solution to his problems leads to emotional release and reassurance. Therefore, counseling is remedial in nature. Okay? Now comes to the conclusion. The general public tends to view counselling as a remedial function and emphasises immediate goals such as problem solution, tension reduction and the like. Counselling may refer to the resolution of a particular conflict or problem situation. 
counseling in its spirit and essence is generative it aims at assisting the individual to develop such that he becomes psychologically mature and is capable at realizing his potentialities optimally the secondary school counseling needs a meaningful realistic practical frame of reference constituent with the short term nature at school counseling okay now comes to the need of counseling what are the needs of counseling there is an urgent need of introducing and strengthening the counseling service in the schools and colleges of our country to meet the various needs uh, of the students administ administrational and the educational system first point is to help in the total development of the student to help in the proper choices of courses to help in the proper choices of covers to help in the students in vocational development to develop readiness for choices and changes to face new challenges to minimize the mismatching between education and employment and help in the efficient use of manpower to motivate the youth for self employment and to help the freshers to establish proper identity theek okay? hai now comes to the principles of counseling principles of counseling first is the principle of acceptance accept the patient with his physical psychological social economical and cultural conditions principle of communication communication should be verbal as well as non verbal and should be skillful principle of empathy instead of showing sympathy put yourself in patient's shoes and then give reflections accordingly empathy is the ability to identify with a person principle of non judgmental attitude do not criticize or comment negatively regarding patient's complaints principle of confidentiality confidentiality always keep the patient's name and the problem strictly secret and assure the patient about the same principle of individuality treat each and every patient as unique and respect his problem as well and the last one is principle of non emotional involve involvement not getting emotionally involved with the patient and avoid getting carried away with his feelings okay now comes to the types of counseling there are three types of counseling first comes to the directive counseling In this counseling the counselor plays an active role as it is regarded as a means of helping people how to learn to solve their prob their own problems This type of counseling is otherwise known as counselor centered counseling because in this counseling the counselor does everything himself that is analysis synthesis diagnosis prognosis prescription and follow up features of directive counseling are during the interview attention is focused upon a particular problem and possibilities for its solution during the interview the counselor plays a more active role than the client or pupil the pupil or client makes the decision but the counselor does all that he can to get the counselee or client makes a decision in keeping with his diagnosis and last point is the counselor tries to direct the thinking of the counselee or client by informing explaining interpreting and advising him now comes to the non directive counseling in this type of counseling the counselee or client or pupil not the counselor is the pivot of the counseling process he plays an active role and this type of counseling is a growing process In this counseling the goal is the independence and integration of the client rather than the solution of the problem. In this counseling process the counselee comes to the counselor with a problem. The counselor establishes rapport with the counselee based on mutual trust, acceptance and understanding. The counselee provides all information about his problem. the counselor assist him to analyze and synthesize diagnose his difficulties predict the future development of his problems 
take a decision about the solution of his problems and analyze the strength and consequences of his solutions before taking a final decision. Since the counselee is, is given full freedom to talk about his problems and work out a solution. This technique is called the permissive counselling. Okay. Now comes to the eclectic counselling. Eclectic counselling is a combination of directive and non-directive technique depending upon the situational factors. This approach in counselling is best characterized, characterized by its freedom to the counsellor to use whatever procedures or techniques seem to be the most appropriate to any particular time for any particular client. This counselling is one where one who is willing to utilize any procedures which hold promise even though their theoretical basis differed markedly. This counseling recognizes that each theory may contain some truth and that so long as a final decision between, between, this, between theories can't be made practical, necessity justifiably takes precedence over orthodoxy. The counsellor in this counselling may start with directive techniques but switches over to non-directive te counselling if the situation requires. He may also start with the non-directive techniques and switches over to directive techniques if the situation demands. Okay? Next comes to the process involved in counselling. Stage 1 is the initial disclosure or relationship building. The counseling process begins with the relationship building. This stage focuses on the counselor engaging with the client to explore the issues that directly affect them. The vital first interview can set the scene for what is to come, with the client reading the counselor's verbal and non-verbal signals to draw inference about the counselor and the process. The counselor focuses on using good listening skills and building a positive relationship. When successful, it ensures a strong foundation for future dialogues and the continuing counseling process. Stage 2 In-depth exploration that is problem assessment. While the counselor and the client continues to build a beneficial collaborative relationship, another process is underway. Problem assessment. The counselor carefully listens and draws out information regarding the client's situation, life, work, home, education, etc. and the reason they have engaged in counseling. Next is the stage 3 that is commitment to action. That is the goal setting. Effective counseling relies on setting appropriate and realistic goals building on the previous stages. The goals must be identified and developed collaboratively with the client committing to a set of steps leading to a particular outcome. Next is step 4 that is counseling intervention. This stage varies depending on the counselor and the theories they are familiar with as well as the situation the client faces. For example, a behavioral approach may suggest engaging in activities designed to help the client alter their behavior. In comparison, a person-centered approach seeks to engage the client's self-actualizing tendency. Next is stage 5. This is the last stage. That is evaluation, termination or referral. Termination may not be seen like a stage, but the art of ending the counseling is critical. Drawing counseling to a close must be planned well in advance to ensure a positive conclusion is reached while avoiding anger, sadness or anxiety. Part of the process is to reach an early agreement on how the therapy will end and what success looks like. This may lead to a referral if required. Now comes to qualities and role of a school counsellor. Self-awareness, ability to communicate, knowledgeable, good basic intelligence, wide general information, intensive special information, example regarding career, training centre for career etc. 
knowledge of people like interest attitude psychological knowledge of human beings tolerance and acceptance of the client's differences he should possesses a mature personality based on emotional stability flexibility and adaptability he should have attractive and good personal appearance he should have a pleasant personality and must have patience he or she should have leadership qualities and he should have interest in guidance and counseling work okay now comes to role and functions of a counselor tala said that the job of a counselor is to help a person to find out what his personality is like and decide how he can use the assessed that is qualities or potentialities he has in order to get rid of the obstacles block his progress last point of this unit that is the counselor's role assisting pupils or helping students to understand themselves and their social psychological world helping students to understand their attitude abilities and interest helping pupils to develop decision making competences help staff members to understand individual by providing material to find out the relationship between school program and development of students and convey to the staff to suggest change in the school and non school environment assist parents to understand the development need and progress of the children helps individuals with the solution to their problems conserves human talent and prevents emotional breakdown helps to achieve high level productivity and personal adjustment skill okay so these are the counselors role the counselors have to do here we have completed the notes of the unit 2 and again i will be back with my next video with the unit 3 take okay? it so i hope this video is helpful for you and if this video is helpful for you then please like this video and subscribe my channel thank you for watching